Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be in God's house this evening. Amen. This will be the last of this Bible study series of temptation. Amen. And we'll see what the Lord has for us next. So be in prayer. Okay. All right. But Reverend Robert, sir, if you'd stand and pray for the Bible study. Amen. Let's get through this. This is James. We're going back to James. He said this. This is what James taught us and shared with us. He said, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin. When it is finished, he said, bringeth forth forth death he said do not err my beloved and we first see this in the garden of eden when god told man he said the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die amen you shall surely die and right here james is giving us the steps that would lead up to man committing sin against god commandments he said but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed he said then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death do not err my beloved brethren and what i want to point out here is because i brought out how this is what god had told man in the garden and right here James is trying to reinstate the fear of God into the heart of man because we should fear to sin. We should fear to even want to sin. There should be fear before our eyes and, and our hearts to even want to sin against God. And so right here he says it brings forth death. Amen. Amen. But we had went to the garden, and what I want to share in this is that every false prophet and every prophet that used to believe and teach false doctrine but has fallen away from it, they will repeat, every last one of them will repeat what the devil did to Adam and Eve, which was to come up with a doctrine or provide a doctrine that would validate the desires of men but with validating their desires with a word it is also causing man not to fear consequence not to fear consequence that's what the devil did and as we go to genesis let's start with genesis chapter 2 genesis chapter 2 verse 9 it says out of the ground May the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the eyes. Listen to this. He said, out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the eyes, right? And good for food. And the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. He said, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, if you look at chapter three of Genesis, look what happens. He says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and it was a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband that was with her and he did eat. But remember, I was telling you, it was not the devil that made this fruit change right here. It just said God had made and gave unto man what was pleasant to the sight. What was good for food? But now she's in a position where what God said was not good for food, was not supposed to be pleasant to the sight, and it will not make you wise because you will learn evil.
And I said, it wasn't the devil that made it change. It was a desire working in Eve that changed her perspective. And it changed it, her perception. And it made sin look like what God said you could have. Her desire did that. And the devil perceived her desire. But you got to understand that there was a word at the time, which was the word of God, which is a commandment of God, that would not validate her desire. So she had not gone through with her desire. And this is where the deception came in. She was deceived. So there was no doctrine at the time that made allowance for them to sin. To validate their desire. And here the devil comes seeing their desire because they're by the tree. And now he deceived them, but in his deception, he made them not believe or fear in the consequence. In Christians, we fear the consequence. That's why if we fear the consequence, we should even fear to sin against God. And that's why I said James was just reinstating or reinforcing that we must fear the consequence of sin. Fear the consequence. And so I had to say all of that because now I taught how all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And right here, you saw those in the garden. And in chapter 3, it said, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, and that the, it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, the pride of life. It's right here in the garden. And now that's all that's in the world to keep man trapped. To keep man trapped. And what I've been teaching you and what I want you to understand what Jesus has done for us. Amen. So that the devil will not have power over us. But we're living in a time where it's so hard because people don't want to live out what God has provided for us. And I just want to read something. I want to read this real quick. Because this is dealing with our walk of life or walking in the new man. Walking in the new man. But listen to this. I saw this on the Internet and it was good and I want to read it. But Christianity. It demands that you oppose all sinful urges from thought, word and actions. It literally guides us against the very fallen nature of. We were born with from Adam. It is the hardest walk in the world. It's the hardest walk in the world. The only thing that guides us to finish the race is a regenerated heart. And I'm going to throw this in there. And the spirit of God to know and to love God. This isn't perfectionism but a continual life of sanctification and perfecting holiness unto our very last breath. That's the new life we're supposed to live. Did you listen to me? It's the very life we have to live. Because Romans 6.6 6 says this, he said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. This is what Jesus did for us. Amen. Because now man is now born into sin because of the sin that happened in the, in the garden. And now man being trapped in sin, but Jesus Christ dying on a cross, crucifying the flesh and the deeds of the body, we're no longer slaves to the body. Right? 
That's what he just said here. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And this is the walk that I'm talking about, the new walk of life, because now that you're saved, we are still living in the world. And still all that is around us is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And I said, Christianity, it is the hardest walk in the world because we're supposed to oppose and not live any of it. We're not supposed to live any of it. We're dead to it. Amen. We're going to get somewhere. And because we're dead, this is what Ephesians teaches us right here. He says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that is the devil. Remember I say he said to the course of this world, and we know all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And the devil is like man. If Man in its perfection, if man who has not been fallen into sin, man who is in a right standing with God, if they fail by these three, which is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, I can keep a fallen creation bound by these three. And he was controlling us when we lived in our old life. This is what Paul is sharing. He said, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh, listen, and the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past. Listen, through the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, let's look at that. But God, but God, amen. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. But he says, by grace ye are saved. Pay attention to that. By grace ye are saved. And so right here, he's talking about our old life. Our old life. We walked according to the course of this world. We were fulfilling the desires of the mind and the body. Right? But then, but God changed us and quickened us and made us alive. Crucified the old man so we're not slaves to the body. We're not slaves to sin anymore. And right here he says, by grace you're saved. But there's a very dangerous doctrine out there. That's a greasy grace doctrine. That'll allow you to still commit the former things. But yet grace will cover you. And this is what I'm talking about. When you accept a doctrine like that, it causes you not to fear God and allows you to say in your mind, I want to do it so bad, so I'm going to do it, and I know God will forgive me because I can pray for forgiveness. That is a very dangerous doctrine. I know God will forgive me. I know how to pray and, and repent. I just want to do this this one time. I got to feel it again. I want to do it one more time. And you're being tempted, and it's enticing you. And here the devil comes around, and he sees that you're vulnerable, and you're being tempted, and he's going to come with the deceptive doctrine so that you don't fear the consequence, so that you can sin and not fear, but yet will say grace will cover me because I can pray and repent. But Paul rebukes that mindset. In Romans, he rebukes that mindset in Romans. Yes, he does. Y'all want to see the scripture? About grace? Listen to what he says. He says this. Oh, trying to look for it. Where that scripture at? Oh, I might have took it out. 
But what he said, he said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin continue in there any longer? So he says, how can we just say I'm not perfect and then commit sin and grace will cover me and grace will abound on my behalf? But he says, God forbid, because we're supposed to be dead to sin. So if we're dead to it, how can we continue in it and then call down grace upon it? He said, God forbid. God forbid. Amen. Oh, yeah, it's right here. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. That's a bad doctrine. Let's kick that doctrine out. We got to, let me tell you something, folks. We really got to fear to even want to sin. Fear. All right. Let me keep going because I got some more to get to. Amen. So, and what I mean by this is them, the apostles, fighting to reinstate the fear of God or put the fear of God in the hearts of men and women to even sin against God or want to sin and then call down grace upon it when they're sinning against knowledge. Paul said, God forbid, and they want us to fear God to even go through with sin. They want us to endure. God wants us to endure temptation, not fall into it because it brings forth death. Amen. But what I also mean where I want to get to is God forbid or continuing in sin is because of the people around us. The world can seem so innocent and convincing. That'll begin to make the Christian want to get close to the line without stepping over. Where the Christian says in their mind, man, they're having fun. Why can't we do that? Why can't we have fun? Why can't we do this? That looks so fun. We can't have fun. We can't do this. And, and the wrong desires are putting, being put in a Christian. Now a Christian is being tempted to go back into the world. To look like the world. But that is not a doctrine from Jesus. And this is what I want to get to. In Ephesians chapter 4. He said this I say therefore. And testify in the Lord. That ye henceforth not walk. Not, uh, that you henceforth walk not. As other Gentiles walk. In the vanity of their mind. Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God. Through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness. Of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness through greediness. But he says, but ye have not so learned Christ. He's teaching us, don't walk like the world. Don't look at others that are around you and fulfilling diverse lusts. He said, they're fulfilling these things. And it looks fun, but it's not fun in the end. He said, we didn't learn this from Jesus. We didn't learn to walk in lascivious ways. We didn't learn these things from him. But it's so easy for the Christian to look at the world's music and say, man, they're, mute. they're having so much. Look at their concerts. And then now it's a direct duplicate replica with the lights low, strobe lights all around. Wanting to look like the world. He said, we didn't learn that from Jesus. Amen. We didn't learn that from him. So he says, don't walk like those that are around you. You will be tempted to. But he said, don't do it. Because we have not learned. Listen. But if we have not learned so Christ, if so be that ye have learned him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, we're going to get somewhere tonight. As the truth is in Jesus, he said that ye put off concerning the former conversations, the old man. The old man, you used to walk with these people. 
who walk in the vanity of their mind, who do these things, who fulfill these things and make sin look fun. He said, that was your old man. But Jesus taught us to walk in the new man, walk in the newness of life. Amen. He said, a, which was corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. He said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, right here, I just said Christianity is the hardest walk in the world because we're supposed to oppose all ungodly lust. We're supposed to oppose the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, which is all in the world. And we live a holy and consecrated and sanctified life unto our last breath. Amen. Avoiding all the temptations that are around us, even when they come, we endure because we want to be blessed and receive a crown of life. But right here, he's telling us and teaching us to deny our old man because he's crucified. But what the devil is going to see is when you are tempted to resurrect the old man and touch the unclean things and do the things that you used to do and to sin again. He's like I said, he's going to provide a Jesus and a doctrine that will make allowances for you to mix with the world again. But come to church. Because you want to do it so bad. Paul is telling us, don't walk like other Gentiles. They're walking in the vanity of their mind. Their, their heart is darkened. They're past feeling. They can't hear preaching. They don't want to hear preaching. They still want to go clubbing. They still want to drink. They still want to fornicate. They still want to do these things. He said, don't look like them. Don't dress like them. They're dressing lasciviousness. Hey, man, don't go to the gyms and dress in tight leggings like they do because you want to work on your body and show your body and flaunt the body he said that's the lust of the flesh he said don't don't be like the people around you but day by day the devil's watching christians that want to be like the world and listen to the world's music give their hearts over to the world's tv and they want to go back To where they start looking for people or to a doctrine that will allow them to go back. When we're supposed to live a life consecrated and holy and refuse all of the world's offers. Amen. But like I said, the doctrines will come. Let me check my time. I want to get through this. The doctrines will come. Because Paul says here, he says this. Sorry. He said, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock of God over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. He said, which he hath purchased with his own blood. He said, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves, people among you of your own selves, he said, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. He said, therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. Like I said, false prophets, when they arise or people that have turned from sound doctrine, they're going to do exactly what the devil did. They're going to see Christians who want to sin that actually are practicing holiness at the time and believe in sanctification and modesty. And he's going to see the desires wanting to go back into sin. And there's going to be a, 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 a Jesus and a doctrine for it that allow them to do it. 
and it's just bringing them back to the old man whom the devil had power over. Right? All right. So Paul says it here. He said, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. The faith that saved them, the faith that delivered them from the pollutions of this world, the doctrine that caused them to walk holy and live holy as God is holy. They're going to depart from it. And they're going to depart by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They're going to give in to another Jesus when there's not another. Because they want to go back so bad. And John says this, recording of what Jesus said. This is why we need the Holy Ghost. This is why the Christian needs the Holy Ghost because of the scriptures that I just read to you. Paul said, perverse men, they're going to come speaking perverse men uh, things. He said, even the men among your own ranks, they're not going to spare the flock. And they're going to turn against sound doctrine. But this is why we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. We need the Holy Ghost. So we be not deceived. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show unto you, he said, all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore I say, said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. You got to understand what Jesus is saying. Jesus is at a time where he's telling his disciples that I'm going back to heaven and I'm departing. Amen. And the disciples is like, you can't leave us. I mean, you've done so much for us. You got to realize what Jesus had done for them. When Jesus walked this earth, he destroyed almost really every false doctrine, every false religious doctrine that was from the devil. Doctrines of man. And he was opening up the disciples' eyes to truth. He was fighting, standing in the gap, fighting against false doctrines, and he liberated the disciples with truth. And they're like, Jesus, you've done so much for us. We're now no longer blind to the doctrines of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the leaders of the law. You've told us the truth. We used to be bound by man's religion and man's lies that, had, that shut up the windows of heaven. But now your truth has given us life. That's why Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Jesus liberated them and fought against false doctrine for them. And now the man who fought on their behalf is now departing. But he says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He said, I'm going to send a comforter who's going to continue to teach you about me. He's going to glorify me. He's going to guide you into all truth. And I taught you this because the devil knows who Jesus really is. How he's a holy God and a pure God and how God will judge sin because Satan himself was cast out of heaven. And he knows who Jesus is. And now there's a doctrine that sets us free from the power of the devil. And what the devil wants to do is lie about who Jesus is so people cannot be set free. But they can receive a Jesus and profess that they know him, but in works deny him. But that's why we have the Holy Ghost. Who knows who Jesus is. Who's a part of the Godhead. Who will testify of the truth of Jesus. As Paul said, as the truth is in Jesus. We've learned of him not to walk like the world, but walk in the new man. Which is created after God in holiness. True holiness, not to sin and call down grace. So listen, remember I said that? We're going to close here shortly. It's 8 o'clock. Jude says, I have yet many things. Oh, 
He said, Jude, the servant of Jesus. No. Okay, yeah. Jude chapter 1, verses 11. He said, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called the, uh, uh, let me, we read this last time. I'm not going to go through it. I told you about the men. He said, these men, they went after the way of Cain, you know, and what Cain did, Cain changed God's sacrifice, changed God's order. Then he said they ran greedily after the error of Balaam. Balaam taught st stumbling blocks. These preachers are preach stumbling blocks. That's what the devil did. He put a stumbling block before Adam and Eve with false doctrine. And then he said they went in the way of Korah after the gainsaying of Korah. And what Korah did, Korah went against leadership. And led people away. We got to stay away from those people that do that. Okay? So, look at this. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I want to read this. Because this is important. Beloved. He said, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the prophets of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. He said, these are they who separate themselves, having not the spirit. You got to pay attention to that, because if someone who is preaching does not have the spirit, that means they have no word from the spirit. And when you have no word from the spirit, you have the doctrines of man and the doctrines of flesh. Which will only cause men to walk after the body. The pulpit is empty of power. They don't have doctrines of the spirit of God which keeps us on the truth of who Jesus is. He said, these men don't have the spirit. And when you don't have the spirit, you'll preach doctrines that will lead people to commit the deeds of the body and allow them to walk after the world. Amen. They'll walk after the world. But we can't do that because this is what it says. He said, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You want to do the things of this world, but the spirit won't allow it. But if these men are preaching without the spirit, they have doctrines that will allow it. And it will cause people not to fear consequence. They will receive a Jesus of tolerance, of inclusion. Having not the spirit. When the spirit is warring against the flesh. Amen. All right, I'm about to close here. Shortly. This is Peter. Peter says this. Peter said, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, privately shall bring in damnable heresies and denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. He said, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. He said, by reason of whom the way of truth is evil spoken of. They used to believe in holiness. They used to believe in living right. But now they've come out and now they're speaking against holiness and sound doctrine. And many people believe in them. And when these people believe in them, you'll just start to see them performing the deeds of the body. Okay? Just trying to give you an understanding. He said, and through covetousness, they shall with foreign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Peter again. He said, these are wells without water. 
clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. He said, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. They're alluring people with their messages through the lust of the flesh because they don't have the spirit. When you don't have the spirit of God, there's no messages from the spirit. That means you only have doctrines that reach the flesh and the mind and not a doctrine that will reach the heart because that's where sin really is. There's no conversion in their messages. There's no calling to repentance in their messages. There's no calling to anguish and to come before God. Amen. And deny yourself. But it's a promotion of the body to continue in sin. Because they have not the spirit. He said the latter end is the worst. Listen. Oh, I'm sorry. He said. He said this. He said through much wantingness. Those that were. Listen to this. Those that were clean. Escaped from them who lived in error. The people you used to live around. Your family member and your friends. They were living in error. Like he said. The, of the blindness of their heart. Don't walk like the other Gentiles around you. But he said now you have escaped from those that are around you. You're no longer living in sin. Amen. And partying with the people you. You've escaped the error. And he said those that were clean. Escaped from those, them who live in error. He said while they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, the same is brought in bondage. So these same people who used to believe in consecration, who used to believe in walking in the hardest walk on earth, don't believe it no more. And now they're telling you that you're the one in bondage. Your pastor has you in bondage. You don't really have to live that holy. You can disfigure your face. You can do whatever you want with your hair. He said, these people, he said, are promising you liberty while they're in bondage. In saying, you're the one in bondage. It's very dangerous. Amen? All right. Look at John. I got to get to this. We're going to close this out. John says this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction. Listen to that. Remember, I said the importance of the Holy Ghost. He says, but ye have an unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. He said, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it and that no lie is of the truth. So he said, these people that went out from us when they were leaving, they said, this is why I'm leaving. But he said, later on, they showed us why they left. So he said, don't follow them because they lied when they left. And you know no lie is of the Holy Ghost. So they were not speaking in the Holy Ghost when they left. So they were not telling the truth. He says, you have an unction. The Holy Ghost. And you could try what they said. And it's not the truth of why they left. They deceived you when they left. They told you lies. This is why I'm going. But when they left and you look at their Facebook, the music that they're posting now, the things that they're doing, he said, but you have an unction to where I don't even really have to teach you. You have an unction from the Holy One, and you know no lie is of the Holy Ghost. It's now made manifest why they departed. And they gave in to another Jesus that allows them to fulfill and look like the world. Let's let's read this scripture again. And this I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Amen? Let's close with this. Now the works of the flesh are these, which are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders. Look, he said drunkenness, revelings, and such like, anything that are like these. Like I said, when I preached that message this year alone, it has brought so many Christians back into bondage to hate where they can speak evil against somebody and destroy them and tear them down, but still claim Christian at heart. The Bible said when Jesus was reviled, he reviled not. If somebody in the body of Christ has done you wrong, you have no right to tear them down. We forgive. We let go. We don't become bitter. And for the rest of our Christianity, tear them down. But it has brought so many Christians back into bondage to hate, where now hate has become the counselor of their heart. But, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, that's the fear. You won't inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, amen, he said is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, amen, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control. Amen. Against such there is no law. He said there's law against fulfilling the desires of the Spirit of God. But there is a law against fulfilling the desires of the body. Amen. He said against such there is no law. He says this, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. He said, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Temptation. The devil wants to call you back to anger, maliciousness, envy, evil speakings, cursings. In all these things that the body produces, he wants to call you back to these things. And you'll be tempted to. You'll be tempted to go back and fulfill the desires of the old man. But he said, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. Amen. Has crucified the flesh. The temptation's real, and you'll be tempted to believe in other doctrines that will allow you to fulfill it. And then you'll have a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. That's the place where the devil wants you to be, is to receive a Jesus where you'll have a form of godliness but denying the power that gets those issues out of your heart. So tonight, it's time for us to make a stand in the midst of temptation. To not believe in the lies of the devil. To not believe in the lies of false prophets, but by the Spirit of God, try it. And to see it if it's, if it's of God. Not to easily give in and believe it because then it gives way to the flesh. It is, I'm telling you folks, it's so easy. 
And it's a gospel that has swept our country. But we're of the remnant tonight. And I pray that you really take this study and take this very seriously so that you can continue in the doctrines and the truth that sets you free from sin. Continue in those. It's the hardest walk. It's the straight gate, which translated is difficult. Keep going, my friend. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give up on holiness. Don't give up on purity. But continue in what I have taught you. Amen. God bless you as I pray. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for this study because I really believe that you have shown us a lot and exposed what the devil is trying to do. And you have given us your spirit that will continue to guide us so that we are not led astray with those that want to go back to Egypt. But we want to know you and continue in you by hiding your word in our hearts and allowing your spirit to dwell in us and to minister to us and to keep us away from all error and all enticement. And we know that the spirit of God will continue to teach us about the true and living God, the real Jesus, the right Jesus, who wants us to live holy, who does not allow us to walk in any of the deeds and the lusts of the flesh, but wants us to walk in the new man that hungers and thirsts after heavenly things. And God, help us to deny the flesh and pray in the Holy Ghost. Help us to deny the flesh and pick up our body to renew our spirit man and build up our spirit man and build up our most holy faith not to be tempted to go astray not to be tempted to go back into anger not to be tempted to go back into sin but to walk in the spirit during the time of temptation because we want to be a blessed people and we want to endure into the end We want to endure unto our very last breath. And tonight, God, we take your word seriously. So serious that we don't want to sin against your word. And the proof of our love is that we will keep your commandments. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Because you said, ye are my friends. If you keep my commandments. And there's no greater friend. And we're so thankful that you have made us the children of God and given us a born again experience so that we can walk above sin and the power of the devil. And we will give no place to the devil to draw us back to the old man so that he can have power over us again. But we'll continue to walk in your spirit and to believe what the spirit of truth is ministering to us so that we don't give in to false truths, to fulfill the desires that will put us in eternal separation from God. God, we believe your word tonight and we'll stand on your truth in Jesus' name.